Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the meeting of the Montclair Historic Preservation Commission. The date is August 23rd, and this is a regular meeting of the Montclair Historic Preservation Commission. Notice has been given in accordance with the Open Public Meetings Act by posting a copy of the notice on the first floor of the municipal building and by sending a copy to the Montclair Times, the Star Ledger, and the Herald News. Um, roll call? Yes. Uh, Chair Bennett? Here. Vice Chair Hyman? Here. Mr. Greenbaum is absent this evening. Mr. Rooney? Here. Ms. Kane Levy is also absent this evening. Mr. Reimnitz is also absent this evening. Ms. Gillette? Here. And Mr. Karasik? No. And we also have. And Mr. Connolly, and Mr. Connolly is here. Okay. Here. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. <clears throat> uh, first on the agenda is the approval of the minutes from our last meeting. Um, does anyone have any comments or addendum to the minutes? I have one comment on the second page. Uh, it's the fourth condition for uh, application 2564, um, line 16, 17, 18, and 19. Um, I, it was my recollection that the presentation of the dimension of the building piers um, there was a, it wasn't just to present the dimensions. I think we had a recommendation in terms of how uh, this proposed <coughs> sign should fit within those uh, piers. Um, and I don't recall exactly what that recommendation was. I know it was something, that, you know, we wanted it to not overlap, but I don't. I believe there was some instruction that we had discussed about I think how that space there was some discussion that the um, that the commission recommended that the applicant match the size of the previous okay. signs so mm -hmm. we can add that language yeah in here too. okay so add um, to previous size mm -hmm. and then may I borrow yours? Just was it the previous width was that yeah, really width. that yeah, was yeah, really the consideration width. because yeah. it's tall because it is tall, taller like their graphic is taller or something and I just have a comment, um, a suggestion on page 2, line 37, and also for page 3, line 1. It says certificate for HPC. Shouldn't it be certificate for approval, HPC application? Um, well, it's the, your, it's, it's the certificate for this application number. So the approving dot that's I mean I could write certificate of appropriateness for appropriateness that's what I meant yeah mm -hmm. so do I have a, a motion to so moved second second all in favor aye. aye aye thank you Our first order, our first application on the agenda is Certificate of Appropriateness, Application 2018-34, Bluestone Cafe, 123 Wachung Avenue. Hello. Hello. Tell us where the testimony about to give this commission is the truth, all truth, and nothing but the truth. I do. Could you state your name, please, and your affiliation with the applicant? Uh, my name is Harvey Schilling, and uh, I own Keystone Coffee Company. Do you own the building or just the business? I, I both. I own the building. Uh, part owner of the building, uh, partner on it, and uh, on the cafe. Thank you. So, Mr. Schilling, can you walk us through what you intend to do to the rear facade? Uh, okay, right now it has uh, some, uh, aluminum siding that was probably put up around 30 or 40 years ago. It's not in very good shape. Uh, I imagine there's probably some old clapboard uh, underneath it, but I, I don't know that. Um, and so we were going to replace that uh, aluminum siding doesn't look very attractive right now with uh, with hardy plank and uh, also I wanted to put a makeup air system in for the uh, kitchen and the ducking work will be um, 
of the same size on the other side of the yeah it's, uh, it's gonna be the same you know the same number of uh, square feet uh, cubic feet per minute uh, so the ducting would be uh, the same <laughs> okay and then um, did you bring a sample of the exterior finish that you plan to use Oh, could, you, could you bring it up so we can see? Thank you. Color? Mm -hmm. Which is sort of a evening blue. I'll yeah. pass it down. Slate blue. Uh, evening blue? It's evening called evening blue. blue. <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> could you pass it down to Tom? Mm -hmm. Oh, and I would l just like to say that we've received um, uh, two days ago the um, drawing that you have, <laughs> which Graham just gave. He sent an email, but he put a copy of it on everyone's uh, everyone's uh, place today. Yeah, they showed us the new ducting, which is to the it's the one on the left. Right. The one on the right is existing. Uh, the one on the left would be new. Okay. Is there anything else that you're well, we going to Well, we thinking about doing something with the windows, but uh, uh, I know I was out of town for a while and I came back and I just got a letter. There were quite a number of questions about the windows I haven't really had a chance to address, so I may just keep the existing windows for now. I think you're referring to Mr. Connolly's report, probably. Uh, yes, our, yeah, that, our that consultant's was, yeah, um, right. um, <laughs> comments. Yeah, I was fine with the windows being replaced. I just was looking for more detail. Um, uh, yeah, there was the cut sheet that was submitted was kind of vague. Yeah, um, and the, you asked something about the uh, divided light, and um, but I, I didn't have time. Like I said, I only got it a few days ago. I haven't had time to get any yeah. more information or any more planning about the windows. So for right now, I guess we can leave as is what's so there. I'm curious as um, if the aluminum siding is removed has any thought been given to just repairing the siding the wood siding underneath just um, from what little we've seen that would be a, <coughs> uh, th that would be quite a difficult project I mean it would have to be pretty much ripped out <coughs> I know I haven't seen the whole thing, but from what little I just I know in my experience, it's been usually removing wood siding or asbestos siding, uh, excuse me, aluminum siding. The siding underneath is usually in pretty good shape, and just some surface prep and painting, um, some crack repair could save you a lot of money instead mm -hmm. of you know removing the whole thing. And then that might expose some of the casing, the window casings that I was concerned about. Um, so maybe a little bit more, you know, exploratory, um, you know, by removing some of the siding around the, the windows just to see what we have there. I also was concerned about um, the eave and the cornice, because I think that's enclosed in aluminum as well. So were you going to leave that when you remove the aluminum siding from the, the body of the building or the addition? The, you're talking the yeah, we're talking about the, the two-story additional at the back of the building, right? Uh -huh. It's aluminum sided, but when you get up to the eave where the roof is, this, that's this aluminum sided as well. Uh -huh. So was that going to remain? We were going to take all the... Uh, all the so I was curious as to how that was going to be treated. You know, if there was a freeze there, um, a soffit, maybe a wood soffit. A, so it was just some of those details I think need to be resolved. Well, I actually hadn't gone over that with the contractor. Okay. Um, <laughs> you know, yeah, we uh, were just talking about the siding. Uh, originally, really hadn't given any thought to that. So you were going to leave, I, possibly I, leave the yeah, uh, aluminum? if it wasn't good enough shape. Um, you could take it off and look at it if you, right. you know, if you, if you want to. Yeah, it, it might be nice. Right. Well, <laughs> once, once you take it off, but it's... Well, that's what I'm saying. Maybe peel back some of the aluminum to see see what's going on in, in specific locations. 
around yeah, the window. I mean, we we did look under some, you know some of the aluminum stuff and what well, I mean it was lower where it would be exposed right. at some time to a lot of water and there was a lot of rot there. I right. mean, uh, it didn't seem to me. I mean, anything is possible. It, it could be done, but it it, it wouldn't it, it wouldn't be easy. No, I'm just getting out of it would be nice to see the whole thing kind of restored back to where it was before the aluminum siding was put on. Because I think you're starting to head in that direction. Mm -hmm. Just you want the whole, the whole picture. Mr. Okay, I mean, I could. Uh, <laughs> Mr. Schilling, can yeah. may I ask a question? Yes. Uh, it sounds as though you have a little bit more to add to this application. Mm -hmm. Would you like to withdraw the application and come back next month with more? I'll just clarify. It wouldn't be a withdrawal. He could carry a continuance. A continuance. Carry it to next month. Okay, where I would take some of the aluminum siding. Yeah, off just to poke around at a few and, of those, uh, see if you can answer some of those questions, and because um, that may resolve your, the, the the question <coughs> I had about the windows. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, you can do everything at once. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, from from what we've seen from the windows, um, I mean, does it uh, doesn't address what was outside of the window? But I don't think there were windows there when the wind when the building was. It's built. possible. I, yeah, there, there's no sign of it. So if you're replacing the windows, there should be some kind of a casing, right? The window will not just go in a blank opening, right? There should be some kind of detail around the window, a head and mm -hmm. the, the casing on the sides and the sill. Okay. I mean, I, I could definitely uh, come back next month. So you want me to explore <coughs> more? I mean, I've seen some of it. It's not pretty, but <laughs> I, I could explore some more. Yeah, photographs may, may help okay. as well. Uh, I just have, I have one other question to, for you. Um, so this it, uh, this duct and this fan, they look really pretty large. So I'm just um, a little bit confused why we would need two. Um, I mean, it looks like a like a commercial grade kitchen hood exhaust system. Mm -hmm. I mean, is that what it is? And yeah. so you're going to have two two of them. It just seems like a very large amount of mechanical. Ducting and, and fan no, exhaust one, for one, small one's exhaust space. And one's makeup air. We don't have makeup air now. So uh, what's going on inside there that you need? That so you're you're venting the kit the hood and then you're providing makeup air, mm -hmm. and they they require s the same amount of yeah, ducting yeah. and the same large yeah. fan. It just seems like a lot of um, mechanical work for uh, a small. What are you doing in there? What's the use? Uh, in the restaurant, it's it's for the they both serve the restaurant kitchen. Yeah, it goes uh, both for the kitchen. Okay. Restaurant. Okay, so. And the other thing that I noticed on the new drawing that we have is that the new ducking that you're proposing actually goes over one of the windows. Well, well, I think the other side does as well. Oh, I don't know. But it looks as though it obscures. M oh no, maybe uh, it'll obscure the same. Does amount? one currently exist? Mm hmm. Yes. Right. So we're yeah. just adding. And this is a stairway. Okay, so we're we'll continue this application for next month. Okay, so just the windows too. Then uh, With yeah. the, include the windows. Yep. Yeah, can, uh, can I have a question? The you've got oh. stucco at the bottom. Excuse me. Do you have stucco at the bottom? That is, um, you yeah, somebody at some point put plywood. Uh, I think what was down there was kind of yeah. rotted. Well, when you d when you do your investigations, can you look behind that? Because it may just be. It looks like there's. Uh, we've seen, we, we've seen it somewhat. What's behind but that? That will be sided in the future, right? You're planning the side. I was planning on, on going all the way down. If right. we if we're okay. going to use um, you know, cement fiber board, uh, it's not going to be affected by moisture. We're going to go pretty much all the way down, and maybe a, a board across on the bottom. Okay, then that should be indicated on your on your plan here, okay. and the Wait, dimensions right. of the siding. Right, and you know, how how exactly. exposure. The exposure. Exposure. Thank you. Right. Good and work. so, just one. I'm sorry to be harping on it, but the the cof bluestone coffee mm -hmm. has a full full food service in there. Yes. yes. Yeah. I it should go. I, <laughs> I've been to the one in that in Brooklyn. All right. There are two storefronts next to. So it's rather large. It's not small. So, but they do for food service. Right. Yes. Oh yeah. yeah just okay. um, I had one other question. What was? Oh, the the new makeup air. Do, normally, makeup air is just a 
like a kind of mushrooms thing on the side of the building? Yeah. Uh, I was told by the contractor, by code, it's got to go up. It has to go up now. Yeah, that's what he told me. Okay. With, and it's mecha that's mechanically that's drawn, that's drawn because that's what that's what you're drawing here is Wait. is that there's a fan that it's sucks. A that's you know it's it's, a, it's not a passive makeup system, but it's. I mean, it just uh, seems like a lot of. I'm just. I'm reacting to it being seeming like a lot of mechanical work for, like you know, only in the sense that it's this beautiful little addition and it's now has two giant ducks on it. I don't believe it's visible from the street. Uh, it's just the mm. public parking. Right. Just the parking. Any other com questions from the? No. No. From Mr. Conley. No. Okay. So. Do you uh, understand then what we're asking you to come back with? I think so. Okay, <laughs> great. <laughs> Thank you. you okay. You yes, you can always call Graham in the office. Thank you. Right. Thank you. Okay, do you, you need the sample? No. No. Thank you. Okay. Uh, next up is referral from the planning board, application 2566, 59-61 Glenridge Avenue. Um, it's a site plan application for a second floor addition to an existing one-story commercial building in the neighborhood commercial zone. And I may add that it's also in the Pine Street Historic District. The materials were previously distributed to the commission. Do you solemnly swear the testimony you're going to give this commission is the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth? Yes. yes. And could you each state your name and your affiliation with the uh, applicant? My name is Mohammed Coker. I'm the owner of this building. Thank you. And My name is Carol Roses, and I'm the registered architect. Thanks so much. So these are the plans that you've you've given us that you've yes. drawn up. Okay. So, um, do you have any um, any boards or any visuals, or are you going to just walk us through? Yeah, I can explain. Okay. Um, now, uh, you want me to? Uh, okay. So basically, um, 59 Glenridge Avenue. Um, the lot is 50 by 97 uh, feet. Could you speak into the mic, please? So, so, so the lot is um, uh, 50.5 by 97.35, that's about 5,004 square feet, slightly regular. What we have here is a one-story masonry building, um, and it's commercial. We're proposing a uh, mixed use, a residential use, to one bedroom apartment on the second floor. So the first floor pr footprint is 40 by 40, that's 1,600 square feet. We're gonna double the size, plus a one-story extension at the rear. Um, and um, in terms of the, uh, um, the design, the facade, um, we have a, a combination of brick on the lower part of the yep. one. Yes, we have brick, we have brick, um, a couple, like, let's say three feet of brick veneer and then stucco. So that's the existing uh, uh, material that is used. So what we plan to do for the second floor addition is add, a, um, put a wood, wood construction with a stucco finish to match the existing below. And instead of just making a box, um, the idea was to create some kind of roof awning, you know, so I do have a little detail here, which I didn't present it last time, just to show how the awning would be. I'm, I'm sorry, what did you awning, say? Awning. An awning? Yes, somewhat like a, a build out, the roof, uh, a motif. An awning? Uh, maybe yes. you should. I have a detail. I can pass it around. Uh, yes. Is it on? It's on the plan. It's on the plan. Um, it's on the plan. Okay. Oh, I thought you. Well, you can see. Yeah. No, it's on the plan. Look at the front elevation, and you can see on the top of the roof. You see the shape, how it goes and kind of um, uh, surrounds the window. It goes up and down. So I do have a detail, so you can see if you have questions, how is it built? So it's basically a projection from the parapet that goes out and creates some kind of roof motif, and it. 
and um, accentuates the, the parapets. So you're speaking about the second floor? Yes. yes. Okay. The addition. Right. How to finish the building. Yes. <coughs> We're just trying, I'm just trying to figure out the, what your use of word of awning. Well, I, it's a, it's, it's a detail of the front wall parapet. Um, I have an option. Either it's just a, it's just a, a 1600 square feet of square over square and I can make a straight parapet and maybe just do some stucco decoration, one option. Or the other option, make it more three-dimensional. And that's what I attempted to do in the plan, so it just wouldn't be a plain box. Um, so I have a detail, right, that would be uh, the idea of accentuating the windows with this projection um, uh, would have a finished uh, fiberglass tile, so a kind of a slate look. Just, just to help clarify, it looks like, so on the front facade, it's almost appearing as like a little bit of a dormer roof yes, over the windows. Yeah, like a dormer. Okay. Well, so the detail that drawing yes. that you have there, the commission doesn't have, but no, on no, the on the page that the commission has, it's down here at the bottom, the front elevation. She's referring to this mm -hmm. roof mm -hmm. element here. Yes. So this is in, in addition to what we have, what you're no, holding? No, She just has a clarifying construction yes. detail on the plan just, that she has, just, in case the commission was curious about exactly. the construction method but it's the same as what you have on your drawing. Okay. So do you have any photographs of two-story buildings that you were looking at that inspired you to, to like historic mm -hmm. precedents or anything that you were referring um, to when you were um, doing this? In the last meeting uh, we had in the planning board, um, they were talking about possibility of not just making a box. You know, you could take opportunity here to accentuate the top and create some kind of um, cornice effect. So that's basically the inspiration. This was at the new development review? Yes, the new development, development review right. right. Yes. Time, and we had talked about it, and you could, I could there make this straight <coughs> across here. Because mm -hmm. the original building, if you look, was three stories high and mm -hmm. straight with cornice. Apparently it had burned and was demolished. But I have the same question as, as Ms. Gillette. What historic precedents are you looking at for, for this type of design for the second floor? Um, it was it a was su suggestion from the last meeting we had to take opportunity not to make a plain box. But of course, we can make a plain box. It's not the problem. I but mean, they actually. They spoke about a cornice. And oh, a yeah, possibly, or and just do something. That's not reflected on these drawings. So they're, they're, like corner, they're well, over, some kind of effect like that. You could, you know, I think it would do, do some it, more the detail. Facade would benefit from um, a projecting cornice and, and the parapet. I think our suggestion is to be looking at historic precedents for buildings that are similar to this type of building in the neighborhood or around you know uh, you know just similar building types uh, two-story buildings that have cornices or have other design features that differentiate it from a box and to use those as a way to make this design because i think that we're um maybe i'll just speak for myself but i'm reacting somewhat to it just seems you know like that you that you may have pulled an element you know, from somewhere else and kind of just uh, place it on this building as opposed to kind of looking to present a, a design that was sort of a, his a historic two-story building. Yeah, I, I agree. And, and I think this facade would benefit from a little bit of symmetry. Um, it, there seems to be too many elements in the facade. Um, I would say try to keep it simple. Mm -hmm. um, I, I have one other thing I need to point out, though. The, um, the first floor plan, yes. if you look at the fenestration that's drawn in your first floor plan. I um, do see that. Number one, and, and I what's corrected shown on the I front elevation, it. they don't jive. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because um, the, the, what is shown on the plan is the existing condition. So it's divided into, you know, sep uh, uh, five you know parts. That that, that's the right, existing, existing condition. So, in fact, we discussed in the last meeting the possibility of opening up um, and creating more glass area, so that's basically it. It's just uh, doing the glass. I have a few work. other comments though about the drawing. There's a dimension on the existing first floor plan that shows the existing building with a width of 70 feet, and then the front elevation 
the proposed front of elevation 40 shows 40, 40 feet. feet. And wow. those two drawings. Oh, you're right. It's a yeah. That's those insane. two drawings graphically aren't even the same width. If you see, you can. It, it is the same width. It's 40 mm, feet. No, I scaled them. They're they're not. Yeah, yeah 40 by 40. It's 40 by 40. If um, you if you project the line down from the plan here. Mm -hmm. They're, yeah, it's I off by maybe a, eight inches. Um, the, those two drawings. Yeah, that's well, also, the, the depth of the existing and the, the yeah, second the floor. Existing yeah, we're just building over the existing off. footprint. Yeah. Um, may I ask? Did you did you l happen to look at the design guidelines, the historic design guidelines for Montclair, when you were designing this? Um, and actually, and and the description of the Pine Street Historic District. Um. They, uh, well, I did take a look at the design guidelines. They were talking about replacing with wood windows. Um, and yeah, I'd like to discuss that too. What is, I don't know, the possibility of using metal aluminum windows as opposed to wood. I mean, I, I don't know the flexibility of. Well, I think we should just take a step back <laughs> and uh, try to take a look at this facade as a single two-story building that um, is is you know contextual with the neighborhood that it's in, and maybe you could take a, another stab at um, reviewing the design guidelines, not just for materials but also for the historic precedents that it suggests are relevant in the area. I think you know there's um, a lot to be learned from. Um, looking around at what the historic fabric is and if you're going to be creating a new version of a building in a historic district that it should not only read as a single two-story building as opposed to two separate fans but also some way fit in with what's around so that's that's my general uh, comment and but also to speak to the parking and the storage in the back I also just uh, wanted to um, see if you guys could solve solve the problem um, without adding that addition in the back because if you are going to be both having a retail space and a residential apartment and you're cutting down more and more on parking I mean the you know that's if you could find a way to incorporate the storage in the building that would do I think a good service to asking for fewer variants with your parking lot I just don't see that that's really helping you either aesthetically mm -hmm. or with your application here um, I, well it's the he well the the business needs storage it needs the additional space that was the whole intent for it and existing I think there's four parking spaces we're providing five parking spaces so you know, have generated as much clearance as possible, you know, 33 by 32 turnaround radius, which, you know, I think is sufficient for that. And, um, and we're doing, uh, we're proposing additional par open space parking as opposed to existing. But there's really a need for that extension for the business. Well, uh, you, you've just um, testified that you need the storage for the for the business. Is yes. there anything in the basement? For no, basement. No, no, no basement. Oh, there's no basement. No. Okay. I'm just trying to come up with yeah, a right. solution that maybe. We have the basement that we don't need. Um, well, I with the, usually with the parking that's handled by the Board of Adjustment. Right. We don't handle that. Right. Just so what, this what, is a planning what, board application, just FYI, Steve. It's a planning board application. Planning board. <laughs> we'll see it again. You'll see it again. Uh, but the, but I would, the, I, I know that I can't say opine too strongly on the parking variance and my relationship to it. But adding, um, you know, a, 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 a addition to the back of a historic building at the sacrifice of, of. Only one park, but we don't have any air. say in that. It's not visible from the street. Yeah, and the other thing that um, with this. What I've, I've under, I understand what you're saying with the gables over the, the dormers over this roof line, but you don't show um, a, a cut through unless it's over here. Is I that can pass this no, around. I have additional it detail, it but if it's there. yeah, if, if it's creating too much of a problem, I have no problem removing that. I think we're just going to remove it and maybe just do something what? more simple. Oh, just remove it. Yeah, just remove it. 
we yeah. they suggest us to do something. Right. I think that Oh, to make it straight and make it cleaner, yeah. to make it look yes. more like I'm a commercial no building that no that was probably yes. there that, that, at the time. As yes, to we'll do this. that. Mm -hmm. We'll do that. Right. So, in in reality, or or what you can what your conception is to have it look more like what you've detailed or not detailed what you've drawn for the rear of the rear elevation. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, we, uh, yes. Exactly. We we'll look closer to the rear elevation. Uh, mm hmm. Sure, I can I can simplify it. That's not a problem. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Are there any other elements that you want to address with respect? Oh yes, to and uh, I have a, I have a um, I guess a, a, a cut of the window here, mm -hmm. uh -huh. which is double hung. I guess you know it's preferable to use double hung as opposed to the casement type. Okay, so it can conform, and and it's um, um, aluminum. So I like to show it to you, pass it around, sure. and see if it's. Sure. So this is a double head. Yeah, these are all shown as being casements. But no, no, no. So you're you're proposing changing the casements? Yes, because uh, there was a reference to that the casement windows. Uh, they they don't really fit in contextually, so I, I don't have a problem using the double hung window. So I just oh, I see. We received the letter from you guys. That, okay, yeah. that was in my that was in your yeah. okay. Mr. Conley, do you have any other um, comments that you that you uh, haven't touched on? Yeah, yet? my my biggest issue is that the, the drawings don't reflect the existing conditions, um, or. They, they really don't jive to one another. Um, it would be helpful if we had a roof plan as well. Mm. Um, a roof plan is flat. Back. It's a flat roof. Yeah, but if we're talking about a cornice and a parapet. No, no more. It's a parapet. Or no the cornice. dormers would be shown if we had um, a right. they're projecting. Yeah. It would, it would just help tell a story. Um, okay, I understand, but I guess we're not going to do And it looks like there's an existing, you said there's an existing brick. Um, yes, there is an existing brick. Right, and that's not shown on, on the elevation. Right, I realize that in the, the picture. Um, the water table that's there, right, it's, it's not shown. Right, so it's like a two and a half foot brick. Yeah. Okay. Uh, are there any other questions from the of the applicant? Mm -hmm. Um, and our discussion. Yeah, I, I have uh, just some comments. Um, mm -hmm. You know, based on the, the testimony, I think it's, it's pretty clear that you know, just with respect to the style, I think mm -hmm. some more thought needs to go into consistency with the overall district. And I would recommend referring to you know, uh, in in presenting to the the planning board. Um, before you do that, take a look at page 37 of the uh, Historic Preservation Plan element. Um, it talks about the uh, Pine Street Historic District and the, um, uh, the significant styles. And it also um, highlights some key buildings that you might want to look into, uh, including 97 Pine Street, which was built in 1907. So, you know, kind of picking piggybacking on what Ms. Gillette said about looking at some uh, historic precedents. Okay, uh, that thank might you be for the guidance. To start with. Thank yeah. you, Jason. Mm -hmm. and I uh, additionally, um, the design guidelines, uh, they're also available on the website. Uh, pages 63 deals with Renaissance Revival, uh, 53 uh, Vernacular Commercial, and 54 Colonial Revival. Um, just for more inspiration uh, in terms of what would be a little bit more consistent for the district. And may I just add also for the design guidelines, page 33 and 34, which actually gives a description of the, the Pine Street Historic District. Okay. 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 So that's our first recommendation. <laughs> <laughs> Number two. I, just a blanket recommendation that uh, you know, uh, Mr. Connolly's memo, uh, those those items would be addressed in further presentation to the planning board. Um, I think we should enumerate those. those uh, mm -hmm. uh, 
I think you can just We can attach. Well, oh, we'll attach it. it. Oh, okay. That's the easiest thing. Um, and you have this, correct? Yes, I do. Yeah. Okay. So, address um, comments. And I think, I don't think it was in the memo, but Mr. Connolly uh, brought it up, you know, in terms of the the parapet, maybe looking towards more of a, uh, an overhanging cornice, something more decorative. I think that I would recommend um, going in that direction. And what, I have a question, what were you thinking in terms of material, uh, uh, exterior? Well, right, so yes, presently it's stucco. It's stucco on masonry, the building. It's okay. primarily stucco. So <coughs> the, idea, the idea is to, bless you, the addition would also be stucco mm -hmm. to match the existing. So continuing the um, same exterior treatment yes. throughout the... Yes. So this band that separates the two? There was a reason for that. Um, just based on construction experience, the alignment sometimes of old with new, um, just to hide imperfections. And so you could band it and separate the two. So it's, it's, it's proud of the two? Uh, it would be the same stucco, a uh, stucco material or band, right. And But it's just... Uh, but in just section, I'm just curious, so you have I'm just going to draw. Mm -hmm. So you have something like that where it's in section, it's flat, and then there's a band in front, and, and then it's flat band, again? A little band, yeah. I mean, uh, I'm one exaggerating. Foot, one foot, like one foot, and just to give the impression of a little depth. But the point, the main point is, um, it's just adding on to old construction, the alignment of the materials. So sometimes it's always a bit off. Yeah, that, that's a typical architectural element, a string course or a band course, mm -hmm. and a it golf looks course nice. at that. It looks good, but the same material, that stucco location finish. Is, I think it's it just going to be a stucco yes. belt. Yes, but it will give the three-dimensional, but more importantly, it covers the mm, misalignment, the seam. The mm -hmm. English Tudor style may, you may find some, mm -hmm. may work for you there. Um, I don't know if there's any in that. It's more this like room. a 19, early 19th century, mm -hmm. uh, late 19, early 20th mm -hmm. industrial, commercial. Um, but a combination of brick and then stone, that string course would have been like a, a stone. Yeah, I guess I just wasn't understanding this as a string course. Mm -hmm. Right. Maybe that's... Well, neither did I, because it's not, <laughs> it's it's not, not, not drawn labeled. as that. Right. So we should, although there is a dimension here. Yeah, that's off. I don't know what that's dimension for. But it wraps around the building too, mm -hmm. right? It's yes, it wraps around the building. Okay, and so the, um, just trying to find your mm -hmm. comments. <coughs> All right. So I guess these comments then say it all. Yeah, I think so. I, I you know, my my, um, I guess recommendation would be to um, include Tom's memo as mm -hmm. uh, you know, adopting those questions and recommendations, right. and having the planning board follow up on that. Mm -hmm. um, in addition to uh, the conditions regarding um, uh, addressing the historic district. And historical um, compatible styles, uh, and that would be that would essentially be the the memo to the planning board. Mm -hmm. yeah. The third comment that you had was just the modification of the upper facade to incorporate the projecting well, cornice. Modification of the upper facade for the projecting cornice, mm -hmm. or mm -hmm. yep. that, that was a, another separate recommendation. Right. Like that was yes. And anything existing. Here. So so it's that recommendation, the historic precedents, and then Mr. Connolly's memo would be the three items. Because Mr. Conley, you 
you do say uh, number five. You do comment on the windows. Yes. Uh, well, specifically, just the the the, the type of window, but I, I think the facade um, design overall needs right some attention. Well, especially because the windows don't aren't in terms of size are not unless it's 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 just the drawing are not in relation to yeah, I think the number of windows may be you know, if you played with that a little bit it may help the facade if we added a four windows instead of three I, I just think the the composition is not working okay so is that that's indicated on no it's not no. In this memo, yeah. Okay. So that we have to add that to this this one was kinda tough for me to review because it was one that had happened before. Right. right. Yeah. Okay. I was on board here. So we'll include that as well. Mm hmm Okay. Do you have that Grant? So well uh, <laughs> <laughs> So it's four bays for the episode. Well uh, I don't I don't know. Yeah, yeah. To, um we would recommend that they explore I think that gets incorporated into our first comment with yeah. looking at historic yeah. press. Reviewing yeah. some of the I, historic I press. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And we could maybe just review, especially with regard to Particular window regard. scale and number. Yeah, mm -hmm. I think especially window scale and number. That's mm -hmm. that's good. Without saying, without dictating. Yeah. Right, and if the, if the windows change from casement to double hung, you know, that, that may help. Uh, right. Mm -hmm. Okay, anything okay. else? Can you read that back to us, please? Um, so the first one is to review the historic uh, precedent with all the pages that you guys have listed, particularly with respect to the window scale and, num and number of windows. Um, incorporate all comments from Mr. Connolly's memo. Should be addressed. All items from Mr. Connolly's memo should be addressed by the applicant. Um, and then item three is uh, that the upper facade should be modified to incorporate a projecting cornice. Okay. And parapet. And parapet. Mm -hmm. And just for the benefit of the commission, this is scheduled September 17th. Okay. <laughs> so, Steve, you'll see it again. Uh, uh, a roof plan? Should, could we ask for additional drawings, right? Uh, a roof plan would, I think, help. Yes. Yeah. Tell us yeah, I agree. Yeah, I agree. Mm -hmm. And just general cleanup of the drawings, get the dimensions right. right. I, I, that's on I think that's, that's yeah. Mr. Collins' yeah. first comment. So. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so, number five would be to ask for a roof plan. Number You've four. Number four. Okay. Yes. Mm -hmm. Do you have Do you have all that? No questions. I'm sorry, I can't hear. No questions. I do understand. Okay. okay. So, so if you have any questions, you can contact Graham yep. in the office, okay. and he'll send you what what. Uh, but I would counsel you to go prepared when you go to your September 17th meeting, to, with the change in what you have here. Okay. Do I have to forward the drawings ahead of time? Um, yes. I do. Yeah, uh, they'll have to be submitted to the department 10 days prior to the okay. hearing for the planning board. Mm -hmm. So you have a couple of weeks. How, how many copies? At the planning board, will require 20 copies for submission. Okay. And I can help you with any other questions you have. I'll be in the office tomorrow. So. Okay. Okay. Sure. Can I have a question? Will we see the um, materials? Um, that uh, can be a, a, an incorporated condition if yeah. you'd like the revisions committee to review final finishes and materials. Mm -hmm. Yes. We yeah. do typically that. incorporate that. Yeah, let's yes, that let's do that. that. Yeah, that would be number five. Mm -hmm. And we can do that on site. Okay. Great. Thank you. Um, Thank you. Graham's going to prepare a memo that goes to the planning board, and you'll get a copy of that. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Next up is the referral from the Board of Adjustment application 2574 Inwood Terrace. This is a bulk variance for front yard parking in a uh, residential one-family zone district. 
And this, it's coming before us because it is in the Upper Montclair Commuter Potential Historic Resource Area. Right. Hello. Hello, how are you? Very well. Cheryl Oberdorf for Inwood Terrace. Oh, we have to, uh, Ms. Mr. Karasik will. Sure, tell us where testimony is and we'll give us permission. I'm sure it's all true for nothing but the truth. I do. Mm -hmm. the sure. Cheryl Labrador for in the Terrace homeowner and applicant. Thanks so much. You're welcome. Um, this is, this um, presentation tonight is a result of a variance application to the Board of Adjustment for the reasons stated by Ms. Bennett, which is for a C1 variance for relief from a hardship on a property peculiar to the property uh, to allow a one parking space in front of the home which is contrary to a, the present parking ordinance of the uh, town of Montclair. Um, and as a result, if the variance is granted, I intend to construct or deconstruct, as the case may be, a uh, have undersized two-car garage that's 16 feet 5 inches to a full-size one-car garage and to use the remaining space for a mudroom, uh, full-size bathroom, as well as access to the, to the garage. When I bought the house and I closed in December, I was horrified to find out I could not park in the garage. It is essentially a no-car garage uh, because, the, because of the size of the doors and the springs, the brackets, and the hinges, I cannot get my car, which is not particularly a large car, into the garage. So when I found that this condition existed, um, I was doing other renovations in the house and asked my architect to come up with plans. So he suggested that I convert the <coughs> undersized two-car garage to a one-car garage and use the car and use the other sides for mudroom. I would very much like to, you know, abide by the Montclair ordinance and put some parking space behind the exterior of the house. Unfortunately, the size of the property is that I cannot do that. Mm -hmm. um, my step backs are very, you know, small property, big house, which is what I wanted. I don't need a lot of yard, um, but it results in this very peculiar condition, which is I can't do anything with the garage. I can't fit a car in the garage. I can't do anything with the garage right now. Even if I replace the um, garage door with a one-car garage door, because right now there are two, I can only still fit one car, one car in the garage and not comply with the ordinance. So um, if the variance is granted, I intend to move the front of the garage, which is about, 20, about 26 inches offset against the facade of the exterior house, forward about 18, 20 inches, and then basically do a full-size one-car garage in carriage house style with a carriage house garage door. And I have artist rendering, my architect rendered of that particular condition for the garage. It would, the, the siding would match the present siding, and I would have a wood, um, a wood garage door, which to me improves the aesthetic of the house if you looked at the report. Uh, with the existing garage doors. They're just wood plank garage doors. Mm. Nothing special. Oh, that's interesting. Do you have anything else to add? No, I do not. Um, I have a quick question. So the, uh, the addition would come forward and be flush with the front facade of the house no it's not going to be flush there'll be a little inset but not okay not flush not flush you and then we, we don't want the relief to be right all the way across okay and what about the driveway will the driveway rem is the driveway the driveway will remain as a two as actually it's not even a two car uh, two cars cannot fit two side by side on the driveway oh. so wh whatever exists now will will stay any other questions Ms. Gillette, do you have any? Mr. Hyman? No. Mr. Rooney? No, it looks like that um, you're going to make this usable. 
That's what I would like to do, <laughs> make it usable. <laughs> and I don't have a lot of stuff. I actually am a person who uses their garage. Yeah. Mm. Not for stuff, but for my car. Good. So the existing window on that second floor, this little... Is, is going to remain. Right where it is. Exactly. And you intend to put oh the, no, the uh, shutters on that smaller window to match the style of the house. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, how's that possible? A what? small window? No, yeah. Because aren't you moving the whole front of the garage forward? No, the garage is inside. Well, the garage, the garage is inside. I'm moving it forward. And the but window is back here, right? Well, actually, right now, the window, there's a bathroom, there's a, there's a power room. The window is on the side of the house. Uh, gotcha. okay. So I'm moving that forward, taking okay. out that window, but I want a window in the bathroom. So um, there'll still be a window in the bathroom. There also will be a window in the back of the house in the mudroom. So rather than the window facing north, the window will face east. Ooh, OK. <laughs> uh, yes. OK. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Any other questions or comments? I don't have any questions. Um, you know, my comment is that I think it's a, a solid application. You're making it usable. And I would recommend that uh, the uh, zoning board would would grant the um, the application as as designed. Thank it's you. my recommendation. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it's interesting that the the garage stalls or bays are so narrow, considering. You know, the age of the house is, what, 1930s? 1931, and I actually did some research. The, the width of cars in 1931 with mirrors, 68 inches. My car, which is a small car, relatively speaking, is 72 inches without mirrors. Oh. With mirrors, it's 85 inches. Oh, okay. So, so the width of, of one bay, the garage door is 8 feet. Hmm. But you've got the springs and the brackets when you lift it up. So basically, there's no space to put the car into the garage at all. Mm. Yeah, I noticed that possibly that the way it was designed, you couldn't get out of the car once Co you got the car in the garage. Correct. And if you <laughs> could get two cars into the garage, you couldn't open the you doors. You couldn't open mm. the doors. Right. <laughs> 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 yeah, that's right. So no, I think you've done a good job. I think. You know, the, the design is complements the house and certainly com complements the, the district. Thanks. I'm, I'm sure my architect will be pleased to hear that. Good. Okay, so our recommendation is that um, approval, as, approval as is. As is. Okay. okay. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you. you. Good luck. Good luck. Thank you. Fred, do you want these back? Oh. Hold on to that. Okay. Our next next up is a referral from the Board of Adjustment, application 2571, 30 point place. Jed Johnson and Susan DeMarco, the owners. And we have um Lisa Mira. The, here as as uh, yes, as okay, the the uh, landscape architect. Designer. 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 So if you could raise your hand and be sworn in. I do solemnly swear the testimony you're going to give the commission. It's the truth, whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Yes, I do. Okay, and please state your name and your relationship to the application. Lisa Mirop, and I'm a landscape designer. I'm working for Jay Johnson and Susan DeMarco. All right. Thank you. I have some additional illustrations. Why don't you give that out? Yes. <coughs> They've been working on the house for a long time over there. Uh, Seems like a year years. now, right? Well, year and a half? A full year of construction. Oh, this is very helpful. Many years ago. Right. Thank you. Mr. Johnson was in Washington for a long time. Right. Dreaming of coming back to Montclair, I think. <laughs> I got it. See? He once told me he had his... Oh. He told me he had a clock on his watch that was set <laughs> for <laughs> January 20th. He's not, <laughs> not happy now. He's been living in the city for months, and he's miserable. <laughs> Thanks. 
Okay, so can you walk us through here what you, yes, um, there's your um, intention? A, a pool that has been constructed. Um, it's actually not very large, just we're calling it a water feature. And in order to um, meet pool code, we have to build a pool uh, enclosure. Mm -hmm. So the f there's fencing that has enclosed the side of the property now that meets that uh, requirement. And uh, we've obtained permission to build these stone pillars at the entrance to the driveway. They are uh, seven feet tall in at, at the top with the capstones, and they are stacked field stone veneer, which is matching many of the other retaining walls that have been built inside the property that you can't see. I would like to do a gate there that has a crest that would, so the gate would start at four and a half feet, but crest up to six and a half feet and then decline. And this does not meet the um, building code for Fence height zoning at the street. Sorry, just to clear. zoning ordinance. Just zoning ordinance. Yeah, not building code. Okay, zoning not building code. Okay, <laughs> zoning ordinance. The That's piers and the gate mm -hmm. actually line up with the facade of the house, but the road is not parallel to the house. The road bends towards the piers. So, had the road been parallel, we wouldn't even be here having the conversation because I am in line with the face of the building. I'm still 17 and a half feet back from the street. Uh, so to me, the design is in scale with the plantings and the surrounding uh, homes. So that's really what the, uh, the variance is for. Okay. It's and for I the height, th height difference in the fence site. Right. So um, this is in the, um, I just would like to say that this is in the first uh, residential historic district mm -hmm. and it's a very signif significant house built by uh, Mr. Nelson who also did the anchorage which you provided the photograph here today. This yes. one. Now did you design this as well? I did and that was, I was here about three years ago right. for this property and that was approved and built so I thought I would just refer back to that. Example. Oh, no, no, no. I thought immediately when I saw this, I mm -hmm. thought I thought of that. Yeah. I just have a question. Um, I actually went by and measured this fence. Mm -hmm. So this, this gate, rather, mm -hmm. is lower than what you're proposing. It is. It is like a, a bit, foot. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But a foot. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. That is correct. So this centerpiece, is it solid the way you've shown it? The Not gate is solid. The gate. Solid wood. Sort of like this. Um, it's similar to that. There, uh, what's missing, in, and I thought it was in your package, is the drawing from Walpole for yeah. building the wood fence. There's a cross member that goes. Yep. So you can actually see the artist that did this drawing didn't include that detail. And that's on the house side, the cross member? No, or no, is no. That that on the well, actually, I think it's on, on both sides. Side. It's oh. street side and house side. And just on one of the doors as this drawing? The, the no, drawing. that's odd. No, it's, no, it goes all the way across. It goes all the way across. I don't know why it doesn't show it. Yeah, it doesn't. I'm, it I'm shows, sure that the it shows design a diagonal and a sort of a a dashed horizontal. There's the dashed horizontal goes all the way, and the diagonal is just on one of the doors. That is correct, but it's going to go straight across, and you'll see that from the street. Okay. It was inspired by a gate I saw in um, in, in in England on a garden tour. Um, did you refer to the design guidelines before you designed this in terms of height um, and also with the gate? We, in our design guidelines, we say that um, no uh, fixed solid surface gate should be on a front, uh, front in a front yard. So I don't know, do you consider this a front yard or is this a side yard? It's, it is the front of the yeah. house. The solid solid fencing is permitted in the front yard in, under the oh, zoning ordinance. Oh, in our design guidelines. It may be different. For, I'm just saying in the zoning ordinance it is permitted. Design yeah. guidelines may be Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. Well, just that, that we're here determining what it looks like that mm -hmm. I thought I would. And can you just clarify where it is on the site plan? Please. I'm just a little lost. <laughs> I'm not as familiar with right. property. <laughs> so in the application there's a, a, a survey. So can you just... 
Right, so the driveway is over here. Okay. So the gate is 17 feet back. So the gate's like the gate's somewhere like here? Yeah, it lines up with, here's the face of the house, so it lines up with the face of the house. So it's and, it go, and it goes, it, it goes that way? Correct. Across and there's the a fence here somewhere like that? Correct. Yeah. And this is like 17 feet ish. Yes. Can you guys Can you guys sort of yeah. does this help everybody? <coughs> if I were Just a few feet a further back hour. and the street were parallel, it yeah. wouldn't have set off the whole variance conversation. So perhaps needless to say, a, a sketch like this would have helped us understand exactly what's going I on. I actually thought my sketch was included in your package with my layout. Where's that? No. We didn't get okay, that. We didn't get that. that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh. Yeah, no, we don't yeah. want to pass that around. That would have been helpful. <laughs> would anybody else like to see this yeah. besides me? Oh yes, that helps a lot. <laughs> and the, the apron and the, uh, that whole apron and even the um, piece out by the street will all be granite cobblestone. Nice. And certainly the intention was to look old and original to mm -hmm. the house. So why make the gates solid the doors is there some privacy I, I don't understand if the house is like over here and this paved area like do you, does it need to be solid is it really a privacy issue over there or could it be i mean i just think this is this is lovely over here you can see well, i mean there's we can't see through because it's solid the shrubs are well i'd rather see solid shrubs than you know solid, solid wood shrubs. yeah I'm, there wouldn't have been a gate unless we have fence or anything if we didn't have a pool so this is all about hmm. but the pool I'm just wondering what whether we couldn't have a more transparent a nice just be looking gate. at asphalt. a nice iron gate so you could be looking asphalt. at some iron work and some light and instead of a sort of a solid wall well this was the, the customers preference and so the pool, the, wa the water feature is like back here somewhere. I'm sorry, I gave up the drawing. Yeah, uh, it, it it's is. like back. Yeah, it's back. No, you, you can't. You wouldn't be able to. See. It's right here. Yeah, I just want to be sure I'm not like saying, you know, let's be sure, let's make mm -hmm. it so you can see everybody in no the skivvies. There's a lot of trees and shrubbery around it. Mm. I mean, and you have this. The goal was to completely give them privacy to the street. This is some sort of wall. I don't know what it is. Right. So the piers are, are to be seven feet at the top, mm -hmm. and then the, the gate is going to be six and a half feet? The gate would be lower than the top of the pier, yeah. So it would transition from four and a half at the highest point at six and a half, and it transitions back down. Right. And so you're testifying that it would be a foot higher than, than this? Yes. Okay. Does everybody see that? Mm -hmm. And it would be in proportion to the piers, which were designed at seven feet. Also, just so I understand, I have two of these in my packet. I'm not, I think everybody does. Is there a difference between these two renderings? No, you does just got two. Does everybody have two? No. I d oh, I, I just, just got, got it. You just, just got, got okay, it. Never mind. One. A bonus. Well, would it be possible to lower the height of the fence? The, the fence? gate, the gate, the gate, not the fence, the gate. The fence is already up. And that's a, f isn't that a four foot fence? It's four and a half. That's, fence is four and a half. So in proportion, the way that you've drawn this, it's, it's a little bit out of proportion. So if this is four and a half, I mean, yeah. you know, the top of this that gate, like the top like of this, yeah, is going to be much, much higher. Well, the idea is that the gate will start at the about four and a half and transition up to six and a half. So based on where they've hung the hinges, I mean, it might be off by a few inches at the at the initial point. Mm -hmm. But it was all designed to work in proportion with the piers, which are seven feet. So um, 
I'm not sure if it's recommendation. Yeah, are there any other questions? Other questions, yeah. The hedges, by the way, are already seven feet now. Um, and the ones that you're seeing in the background will grow to be 10 or more. So I think it's in scale with the plantings and the house behind it. That's the neighbor's house, not their house. Well, my recommendation would be to reconsider either the opacity or the scale. I'd say probably the combination of those two is what's giving us a little bit of pause. That if it weren't a completely solid six and a half foot gate with solid piers, it would feel lighter and less dense. Or if it were smaller and solid, it would feel less oppressive. I think that the combination of the two is what's kind of overwhelming. I, I don't disagree actually that the scale does seem appropriate, but for for me the solidness put with the scale mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. is what's is what's right. making it feel really um, uninviting. It's making me feel, you know, Considering like Considering that the fencing is all open. Yes, all to the side of it right. it's all open. And also considerably lower. Well that's the four feet. That's right. what they're allowed. Right. So you know you have a solid two solid doors in between two solid pillars it's just next to what is is a much more open green light perimeter condition i think you know one of the two scale or opacity has got to be pulled back a little yeah i don't have any other comments with it, but i i echo that sentiment that um, it does feel um a little jarring coming off of uh, uh, wrought iron fence and the greenery. And I, I agree, uh, <laughs> which I said before, but I think it's uh, it's a very aggressive fence within this um, uh, residential gate. neighborhood. Gate. The gate. gate. I'm yeah. saying gate, not the fence. I think the fence is, is lovely. The fence is fine. <laughs> this, the skip laurels look very nice, but that, can, uh, you know, next to, to this really dense gate is is really over over scale okay. so our recommendation I have a question oh um, sure the drawing uh, that's labeled 2.0 that shows a gate it shows 66 inches from grade to the top of the crest on the gate is it a five and a half are you foot at the wall pole drawing yes Okay, that's, we're going to modify that. Oh, okay. So they had yeah, designed it so that it would actually exceed the seven feet, and I didn't want to do that. So I but 66 to inches is five and a half feet. Mm -hmm. Well, I think it's definitely going to be taller than five and a half feet. Yeah, but if we're saying the piers... So yeah, I want to go below yeah, um, the height of the Well, the piers, piers are not yes. drawn correctly then, right? Right, yeah, so there we go. Well, the piers are already up, aren't they? They're not the... Um, they're not capped. There's actually, there's a photograph there showing you what's there now. It's, it's just, just the steel, steel core. Right. Uh, oh, great. Oh, by the way, they're going to have gas lanterns on the face of the stone piers. Oh, that's nice. And they'll be decorative hardware. We were going to add some, um, and this wouldn't be possible if the gate were open. There's going to be uh, sort of antique looking um, iron straps at the top and the bottom, sort of very English looking, which the house is an old Tudor house, as you know, and possibly some copper hardware like grommets that were going to be detailed along the top, bottom, and center bar. So the intention was to make it very good looking, very handsome. Hmm. Well, I was like, it's, it's hard to understand what you're proposing without having those elements in the drawing. Mm -hmm. So, like I said, I, you know, I for one think that either the opacity or the scale needs to be reduced. Mm -hmm. I would say the opacity, but if I saw your detailing, mm -hmm. the cross members, the ironwork, things like that, I may and feel differently. So, would, would mm -hmm. you know, I have a couple of inaccurate drawings. I'm trying to piece together a mental I image. I just today. I was just trying to bring something for time. Um, so maybe that would be something that you would bring to the... Uh, yeah, I revision. Board of. Oh, this is a better rendering. Oh, 
bring it to the sewing. So you see that cross piece and the little grommet details are all over. Mm -hmm. And then not in this drawing, I want to hire someone to create those beautiful straps that you see on old English doors yes. that would be very antique looking and they'll match what they have on their garage doors and their front door. But so we certainly we're working to try to get it to coordinate with the house. Well, that's and I will change this so that I have it for the variance meeting. Oh yeah, that's kind of the variance. It's not. This is just hot off the press. So, if she's that's going to change it. Well, let's just. Oh, okay. 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 All right. So our recommendation then <coughs> would be to scale back on the opacity and the scale of the of the gate the size the height of it so is this because I had written because Jenny had suggested an either or so what is it right neither I mean that's uh, that's how I feel but I think that it would be I'd have to sort of see it right yeah <laughs> we, we can't I, I, I think it should be phrased that she sh uh, the applicant should uh, is it both the scale and the opacity, and or the opacity. yeah okay. and or but I think also that we can we say that we recommend having a complete presentation right to be yeah. to before the board of adjustment including mm -hmm. the the decorative details that you're talking about mm -hmm. yeah well I can work on this going a yeah bit more mm -hmm. I mean even just like sketching out you know yeah no it's not hard to change this okay okay so I think that I think that's it thank you okay yeah. thank you I need my phone back <laughs> yeah, your phone. Your entered into evidence. <laughs> yeah, maybe. <laughs> That's right. You don't need it. That's right. I don't have oh, it. Oh. Okay, when does this go to the zoning board, Graham? In September. Oh. September 12th. Oh, okay. So we're working on another. Yeah. Okay. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, next up is the referral from the plan Thanks, planning board. Application 2572-544 Bloomfield Avenue. It's a minor site plan approval, and this is located within the Town Center Historic District. Okay then, hi. Morning, Richard. Richard Grabowski owns this building. Yes, he does. Can I take a take a hike for for this application? Oh, okay. okay. What do you? Who swears them in then? You. Uh, you do. You do. <laughs> chair oh. has chair has the authority to swear. Okay. Yeah. So, are there five of you who are going to testify? Possibly, yes. Okay. Yeah. Right, yeah. So, why don't we start from the right? And, and the gentleman in the back, if you could just step up to I the podium, too. The um, yeah. And actually, we'll start with you. If you could just, everybody, state your name for the record <laughs> and your affiliation. <laughs> <laughs> and then we'll go through. All right. Should I stop? Yep. Hi, my name is Dominique Paulin. I'm the owner of the restaurant. Mm -hmm. My name is uh, Olivier Muller. And then, uh, same, I'm uh, the owner of the restaurant. Mm -hmm. Tom Reynolds from uh, the Architects Line. Ben Parker, owner's rep, construction manager. Craig Chilito, uh, Psycho Projects uh, designer. And if you could all just raise your right hands and uh, do you swear or affirm that uh, the testimony you're going to provide before this board is the truth uh, to the best of your ability? Yes. Thank you. Okay, so do you have, um, would you like to walk us through the project? Yeah, if you, if you've got. <coughs> The package I have right in front of me. He's got that there. Graham gave it to everyone. Graham. Um, <coughs> I think the second page is a good one because it shows the pictures. Um, on there you see the existing building. On the oh, you need to move the microphone so we you can hear, that? hear you. Yes. yes. Okay. So on the second page, R001. Oh, just a second, sir. Are you on the large drawing? On the big drawing. Yes, sir. I just thought it was a good guide to use the drawing since we all have them. But I can just speak. Um, so yeah, the, the existing building is on the right there. Um, we're very happy with the building. 
that our clients um, got we our intent was to uh, do as little as possible to it uh, because it works for us very well it's been several things in the past retail a theater a long time ago and a bank um, but it's a uh, that's a nice building we don't want to do too much to it um, we are proposing to pl uh, remove the door temporarily that's in the front of the glass wall because we're putting the new entry into the garden and the, the, the the entry to the restaurant is through a, uh, a garden opening that goes into through the side. That's for the operation of the restaurant to work better and to um, take advantage of the outdoor seating. Um, the door way that would be removed would be reversible and a plate glass uh, piece would be put within that doorway. That's we talked to Graham about that. Um, the other things that are happening is we have a planters that are in line all on the facade that are out of IPE and Next in the garden, we have a low wall that's 30, I think it's like 37 inches tall. No, it's a little less than that. 36 inches tall that lines up with those planters, and that's meant of as well. And there are planters behind that wall with uh, red cedar. Um, so it's an evergreen plant that allows some views through, but, uh, but will be have foliage year-round. Um, there's a large doorway there that's about eight feet across. Those are completely open during from early in the morning till night so the only time they're closed is for security um, there's a sign that abides by the sign regulations that is a uh, a blade sign or a bracket sign that uh, says the name of the restaurant for uh, that is hang hanging off the side of the building one third off the corner and is not lit internally it's lit externally by the light box that already exists and by another light on the canopy do, do you have color uh, renderings yeah, sure. Yeah, you just have the large black and white. And take this one. It's the same ones you have. We have only one set. Okay. Oh, oh, that's that's right. around. Yeah. There's only we four can of share. us. We can share. Yeah. <laughs> uh, what material was the sign going to be? The sign is a patinaed metal, and the lettering is cut. Through. And the letter, and the lettering is a uh, water jet cut steel that's uh, out on stem pieces, two and a half inches. So there's a shadow play when when the lights are on it, or it's readable against the uh, backdrop of the patinaed steel. Good. We didn't want anything internally lit; it seemed counter to the class of the restaurant. Trying to be a little subdued. That's that's it. Mm-hmm. Could you explain a little bit more about the water feature, which will be visible from Bloomfield Avenue? Um, yeah, it's a small uh, pond. It's about 18 inches off the paving, and it just has um, a little tr a trickle of water from a little low wall. Uh, the point of that is, uh, well, it's, it's a playful feature that when you enter the restaurant garden, you have like the counter bar on the left, and then you have seating <coughs> on the right, mm. um, and then um, that also is right at the entry to the restaurant proper. So not only is it fun, we thought it would be a fun element for kids, we thought it would be beautiful. We also thought it would make kind of uh, an audio veil. Oh if you absolutely. progress to the back part of the garden, you'd pass by the noise of the entry to the restaurant and arrive at the back garden and you kind of go through this veil of sound of the trickling water. So it kind of removes the street sounds for just a moment before you get to your table. Well, it's very nice. Montclair finally get a water feature. <laughs> 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 it's, it's not the biggest water feature. It's not no, no, no. That's so small. Any yeah. water <laughs> feature. <laughs> And do you anticipate a problem with that during the winter, maintaining it during the winter months? I imagine we might shut it off. If it, yeah, we'd probably have a heat trace on a pipe and just shut it off. Uh, I just asked yeah. if there was a... <laughs> if we could keep it year-round, we could I have a tiny ice skating <laughs> rink. <laughs> 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 but you're not going to have any fish in there, no koi Ooh. or anything. <laughs> we haven't studied it. I suggested turtles at one time, but there was no <laughs> response. <laughs> Are you finished with, with you? I mean, those were the points that we were told were uh, based on Graham's write-up about what we had to address. Mm -hmm. But right. we can say that we've successfully hidden all mechanical from the street. That's not, there's not one bit of mechanical that's visible. There's quite a large parapet on top of the building. 
and the way we're doing everything, you can't see anything even from across the street. That's it was going to be my question because yeah. I didn't see that on the plans. If yeah. you look on the bottom right of that is same it? sheet, you'll yeah, see oh, well, there's, right. there's a visual guide. The reason you don't see any is because there is none. You can see the mechanical on the roof plan right? Um, and the site plan on A001, but none of that is visible from the street. Hmm. Um, do you have a quick, any questions? I don't. Mm -hmm. I have a question about the planter that you're, the, the type of uh, plant that you're using in the planter that fronts on Bluefield Avenue. Because in the plan, you say mountain laurel, but I think you changed it when you just spoke. I think they were talking about the uh, plant, not the planters in the plant, but he was talking about the growing behind of the, um, at the entryway. Oh, in the pa by the patio? Yeah. I mean, we have both those in the garden plan, but we're trying to go with local non-invasive species and a lot of evergreens that'll be green year round. Well, no, so my, qu my point about the yeah. m uh, mountain laurel, which is a beautiful plant, but it's a shrub and the way that it grows, it gro it's right. leggy at the bottom. Where's so the I don't know how you're going to get a... We have English dwarf laurel. Where's mountain laurel? I thought we had that. We have English dwarf laurel inside along the walls. Um, where no, it, my on the site plan, it does say Mount Moral, yeah. That this, this, if, this, if you're creating a living wall, which you are, to Bloomfield Avenue, that Mount Laurel that I know from, from being a native plant right. around here, and what I have in my, it, and I looked it up online to see if there was something that they, another, another type of Mount Laurel, Laurel that they recommend as a hedge. And because you, you need it, you know, you don't want it leggy down at right. sort of, you know, eye level. You want it to be. Yeah, we're like also bo boxwood would be something that you would. Yeah. Yeah, we have boxwoods inside in the large planters. Uh, part of the strategy is also keep it all in planters, so that should they die or or right. not do well, we can simply switch right. out the planter and not have to depend on making the soil work. Right. Um, well, I would just investigate so a different type of plant of yeah, okay, plant there to. To, to, uh, yeah, not a different concept, just a right. different species. Just an, uh, yeah, just a totally uh, yeah. just a different plant that would work with what you're trying to do, which I imagine is a, a living screen between Blue the Avenue our and, and that's, what was our that's landscape? actually moved on now to an eastern red cedar. We wanted it. Uh, oh, I thought I heard that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay. We, we, in further exploration, we realized that it, we would get a better screen. We right. would still be able to see a little bit of vibrancy right. from the street and the restaurant, but that that it's a classic northeastern plant. Um, okay. It's relatively easy for us to maintain. Needs a bit of pruning at the top. It'll create a, a barrier for us, and we move towards the eastern old cedar as that. And are you are you suggesting a gate across that opening? It's, it's a, a security gate mostly. The, the idea is the doors, when they're open, fold invisible into the wall, and you don't see it at all. No, so I, I meant uh, on Bluefield Avenue. Yeah, that's yeah. yeah. Oh, oh, sorry. So sorry. the opening that you can see on. The, the site plan or the, the color rendering that we just sent around, you can see an opening, an, an archway that you go into the, the side yard through. Oh, okay. The idea is the doors disappear. That oh. archway is actually constructed out of two doors that will close at night for security reasons. During the day they open up, it becomes a solid archway and it, it'll disappear. Oh, that, that's very nice. And is that out of what, like a, a metal? That's a patinaed steel. A patinaed yes. steel? Well, and using and what will the doors be? Uh, they'll also be the patinaed steel. Right. And so then you're suggesting painting this side, of the, is, or is a gray, a gray? Well, it's being restored, actually. It's in bad shape, so you can talk more to that. Yeah, there's some work. There, there isn't a color selection on the repaired stucco as, at the moment. We don't have a, 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 a color choice. I just wondered if it was changing for what's currently there. We do not plan. At this point, I don't think it is. OK. Do you have that comment? No, I actually, uh, I, you guys did a great job with this this building, um, both the architect and the designer. I think well, it's just fabulous. Um, but I, one comment though, the doors that are being removed on the front facade, they're going to be retained, right? Yes. On yes. Second yeah, just yes. Front of so the just in the future. Uh, also, the stainless vestibule inside is being right. restored, great. retained yeah. on yeah. site, kept. Yeah. Yeah, I love it. It's yeah. a great project. And available for replacement. Yes. Yeah. 
Uh, what is the t I have one more question. The, the type of wood that you're proposing for the planters in the front? We're proposing IPE, okay. which is a Brazilian oh. hardwood that stands up to weather very well and has that really wonderful slight variations on warm to red, warm red to browns. Which will sort of blend in with the, the, the facade. Yeah. That's there. But it ages to like a silvery color, right? So it'll yeah, it gets a little pretty quickly. But we really wanted that long horizontal on the whole facade mm -hmm. there mm -hmm. to connect between the planters and the wall. It was a bank. So it's a oh, bank deposit box. Oh, okay. We're keeping that. <laughs> the drinks. deposit box? Yeah, we're keeping yeah. that. Yeah. <laughs> we like we like that. Ooh, yeah. drinks, did drinks. you say? <laughs> <laughs> and I had a one last question that I had asked Grant about because I had a question about the HVAC and also the garbage dumpster and I was told that you're now going to it's a refrigerated to everything system. down in the in the basement we have a garbage hole that's vented that's downstairs it's basically essentially a large walk-in yeah and then the uh, porters at the end of the night uh, wheel it up to the inside of the gate that's closed at that point right uh, to await that through a deal that you've been negotiating with mm -hmm. uh, action or IWS, IWS. Action, one of the holders in town yeah they'll open the gate and get the garbage Oh, I think that's... So there'll never be garbage on site. There's actually an approved loading zone outside. And additionally, the uh, garbage hold is refrigerated to help keep... Isn't that amazing? Yeah. It's, a, it's <laughs> a system that we've used in, in the city a few times. Spaces at a minimum, you can't store garbage outside, so we've, we've included mm -hmm. these... It's common in boxes. larger restaurants to refrigerate your garbage right. interior. Mm. Mm. I've heard of them. I've never been involved <laughs> in a project with one. Another first for months. <laughs> yes, I'm excited. <laughs> this is a city. Very exciting. Yeah. This well, is yeah. a city. This is a city. <laughs> um, well, I think um, what you've done with the facade, is, it, it looks really wonderful. And I think that added space of the greenery on, on the side is, is done really well. And the fact that you've actually managed to put a water feature in is just amazing. <laughs> and we'll turn it on. <laughs> and, yeah, and we'll use it. <laughs> it's an amazing site. It's yeah. like if you had this site in Manhattan, this would be incredible. Right. This is an amazing site for this restaurant. I've been waiting for, to see what was going to happen with that building, so I'm very happy. So, um, so it's a other? recommendation to, so just, just for the commission's benefit, this application is a minor site plan application that includes no variances. So the application oh. has the ability to be approved by the Development Review Committee, um, and they're scheduled to go to the DRC on September 6th. Um, so that's when we'll approve, the DRC will hear the application uh, and have the opportunity to approve it at that time. Didn't we just see that? We did. That was our advisory review, but it's oh. going to ask for the public hearing. So. <laughs> me again. <Okay. laughs> we can um, so did, did the commission want to make a recommendation that the doors be retained for future use? Mm -hmm. I think there's a yeah. note on the drawings. Oh, is there a note on the yeah, so then I saw the note. Additional condition. I didn't additional see the note about the vestibule, but I figure if there's one, just be okay. sure both notes okay. are on then. So then just general statements that you guys support the application. Yeah, yeah. and okay. the fact that you've investigated the cedar to use as the planter as a right. living screen. We and that's consultant. an evergreen? Is yeah. that a? It is an evergreen. Okay. Yeah. yeah, we have a landscape consultant who's advising us oh, on native plants and doing this right. Okay. All right, good. And the lighting then on the, um, I know you it said something about retaining, that there's a. Um, there's an existing valence or like he called it cornice, I think in your report. Right. Called a valence that hides the lights so they shine down but you can't see the source. Right. So we're reusing that to have lights with a narrower focus that only hit the plants down, down low in front of the windows. Um, so we're using narrow throw five degree uh, warm lighting at 2700 Kelvin temperature, if you want to mm -hmm. know. So it all kind of glows at night. And But that's the existing lighting just being reused. Good. And so there's nothing in the in the um, outdoor space that will, lighting that will flip, bump over into the sidewalk? Um, no, I believe, no, there's there's regulations against that. Right, I just wondered yeah. what you were using to. That's why we're, yeah, we're using the valence to barn door it so right. no, nothing happens. Right using the narrow throw spots. Yeah. No, it looks great. When are you going to start? <laughs> <laughs> by Christmas? Do we have French food? French food by Christmas? <laughs> Depends on how September 6th goes. Okay. Yeah. Well, good luck. Thank you. Thank yeah, you. thank you. Thank you. Thank you. A very exciting project. Yeah. yeah thank you. Do we need to submit these for anything for you guys for your records? Or I can give you some copies if you'd like. Or I'll drop them off or we can just set it in Thank you. Thanks very much. Mm -hmm. Bye. I forgot how to say goodnight. <laughs>
I can say good Please. job. And <laughs> sure. We'll just take a two-minute break, please. Is Ira coming back? <laughs> he packed up. He did? I saw it. He took his bag. Oh. Okay. Our next application is a referral from the Planning Board, application 2577, 98 Watchung Avenue. This is an amended site plan approval, and uh, this uh, project is within the Watchung Plaza Historic District. Gentlemen, raise your right hand, please. Do you solemnly swear the testimony you're going to give this commission is the truth, all truth, and nothing but the truth? Okay. Could you each state your name, please, in your relation to the applicant? My name is William Staley, uh, and I am the owner of Classics Reborn, which is a local residential uh, builder, and uh, and the owner of this building. My name is Paul Sionis. I'm the project architect. My address is East Hillside Avenue, Montclair, New Jersey. Thank you. So. Um, Mr. Sionos, would you like to walk us through what you're proposing to do with oh. this building? Sure. We'll, we'll both be speaking. Okay. Oh, but, good. Um, okay. So basically, this is um, uh, an application for an amended site plan approval. So uh, Bill received uh, site plan approval in 2013 from the planning board um, for this property. and. Um, Bills decided to make some revisions to what was approved back in 2013. So we were referred to this prior to um, uh, attending a meeting at the Development Review Commission in two weeks. Um, so basically, 98 Watchung Avenue is located on the north side of, of uh, Watchung Avenue. It's one of two properties that are uh, just to the west side of the railroad tracks and the railroad trestle. Uh, both of those properties are the, the last two properties uh, in the Watchung Historic District, Watchung Plaza Historic District, plus the last two properties in the NC Neighborhood Commercial Zone. Uh, but they are separated from Watchung Plaza by the, the raised railroad trestle and, and railroad tracks. Um, 98 Watchung Avenue consists of two buildings. There's a small building in the front and then a large warehouse that takes up the rear one half of the property. And the uh, buildings are connected with uh, asphalt paving. Uh, this was uh, prior to Bill purchasing this property in 2013. Uh, it was Zimmerman uh, Fuel uh, Fuel Oil Company. Uh, they had offices and also storage for their uh, their heating oil trucks on the premises. Um, the building was the front building was constructed in 1930. It was a a um, battery vehicle battery service center. Um, and then around 1970, a, an addition was constructed on the east side of this building. So the original vehicle battery service center, we believe, had an overhead garage door uh, at the front left side of the building. It was an infilled um, uh, window uh, with uh, wood surround around that window. That um, We believe that uh, that was an overhead door or garage door. And then on the right side, as you face the building, or the east side of this building, uh, it was basically, it was originally a canopy where vehicles would drive under to have uh, batteries either serviced or, or um, removed and, and new ones installed. And then sometimes around 1970, we believe Zimmerman uh, Heating Business uh, constructed that, that one-story addition. The original part of the building from 1930 is, is brick. It's brick with a flat roof. The brick's been painted. Uh, Bill actually has samples of the of the very thick paint that's on it. It seems to be also a waterproofing. And then um, the part that was constructed around 1970 was a concrete block building with, with stucco on the exterior. Uh, the, the part from 1970 is uh, set a little bit lower. It's uh, that took the place of the original canopy. Um, it's set back uh, by about two feet from the original brick building. Um, so so uh, the proposal is to uh, clean up the facade to, to uh, give this a sort of a new improved look and, and the goal is to make it sort of a modern industrial look almost in, as a homage to the industrial use uh, that was there originally which was the, the, um, the battery facilities. 
in 2013, when we went to the planning board, this was before this was in the historic district. Uh, so in 2013, the proposal was to make this a transition uh, from Watchung Plaza to the adjoining residential properties directly to the west. So uh, you know, on the drawing we, uh, we submitted, um, there's the existing south elevation on the top right side of that drawing. The, the center right side of the drawing shows what was approved in 2013, and that actually had a um, extended a false uh, shed roof uh, with a, a false uh, front porch or patio um, and uh, a little gable roof over the front entry. Um, Bill has gotten away from this and decided to simplify this and to do sort of this uh, clean aesthetic with two uh, large storefront openings. It'd be aluminum clad windows uh, both on the left side of the front facade and also on the right side with a, a metal bulkhead under the storefronts. Um, the uh, proposed south elevation on the bottom right drawing shows this as a smooth stucco finish. Uh, the left side shows an option to have this as painted brick since the original building is painted brick. The thought was to, to match the painted brick on the right side. Um, but the, the preference uh, from Bill is to do this as a stucco facade and to have this tie into the, the uh, east side of the building. Besides the two windows, the storefront windows uh, and the metal bulkhead below those windows, um, several signs are proposed. There is a, a two foot by two foot um, uh, metal sign with the street number 98 uh, placed to the right of the entry door. Uh, there's an existing replacement uh, door on the building now, so the, we don't know what the original door was, but uh, someone replaced that uh, a long time ago with the, uh, uh, the residential style entry door. Um, the um, other signs that are proposed, uh, we're proposing one blade sign, a small blade sign on the front right elevation of the building, uh, and then also proposing this uh, metal canopy over the front entrance. So it'd be a, a possibly nine foot wide canopy that would project out a little bit over three feet, both to serve as um, protection from the elements over the front entry, uh, and also to tie in this sort of industrial look. Um, we know in the past with other projects in Watchon Plaza, you frowned upon metal canopies and said that they, uh, they'd be better off in Bloomfield Avenue. Um, but this is, this is one of two properties that are on this west side of the train tracks and they sort of stand apart from uh, the other properties within Watchon Plaza on the east side of the train tracks. Um, the um, lighting, uh, Tom Connolly provided a, a review letter um, and um, one question was, are the lights necessary? So two, fa two facade lights were shown on the front elevation. We're not wedded to those lights. Um, you know, there, there, there's really no lighting along this part of the sidewalk here. So our preference, if there is to be a light, uh, we'd at least like to have one wall-mounted light to the left of the front entry door. And if, if um, you know, the commission uh, prefers, we could even have a concealed lighting under the, under the canopy. Um, other items um, was the existing brick historically painted. Um, we don't know how long it's been painted. Uh, <coughs> we have the 2012 uh, nominating report for this property. In 2012, it was, it was painted white. Um, the um, number six says the existing bumper to the right side of the door should be maintained. So there are originally bumpers at the front bottom left of the facade and the front uh, bottom right of the original facade. Uh, the right bumper uh, can't remain because the building um, will be coming out to align with the portion on the left. And um, so the bumper is currently set back uh, from the line of the facade. So when uh, the new facade is, is brought out by this additional two feet, um, the bump bumper will be lost. Um, we talked about if we should recreate the bumper on the front right side of the building. Um, but there's an adjoining narrow driveway that does not belong to this subject property. Um, so Bill's worried that you know, the bumper could get hit uh, by other vehicles coming out that driveway. Um, what else? Uh, just to... Uh, on just that last point, the the uh, bumper 
So the driveway that is to the east of this building, uh, as Paul said, is not part of our property, and the building is right on the property line, and the driveway is extremely narrow. We don't use it, and in fact, the people who do own that driveway usually end up using our driveway, which is the <laughs> one to the left side of the building, the, the east side of the building. I'm sorry, the west side of the building. Right. So, so that that's the proposal. Um, okay. Any questions? Um, I I just have a question. I'm a little bit confused between the uh, painted brick and the stucco. Are you proposing to to, to uh, put the new bring the new addition out and and make that painted brick to match the? Right, so the option in the bottom left dr drawing, where it says proposed south elevation option two, that's to, to have the facade be painted brick uh, to match the existing painted brick. Um, and the other proposal was to have it as stucco. So to stucco over the existing brick? Cor correct, right. Yes. So the existing brick has a very thick, uh, sort of like dry lock, I don't know if you know what dry lock is, mm -hmm. but a very thick, um, heavy paint, coat, uh, paint um, coating on it. It's not paint, it's a coating, uh, uh, thicker, much thicker than paint. And in places, because we were experimenting with it, with it, and in places we were able to peel it off, and other places we can't, it's just, it won't come off at all. Mm. Um, so and, and I said to Bill, well, you just follow the National Park Service guidelines to remove the paint, and he said they, they tried. So, so cool. I, so what we've done is we've, I've, I've been, I've been trying to pull, let's you know, see if I can pull it off. It actually comes off uh, in places, but in other places it doesn't come off at all. So from a construction standpoint, this raises a, a bit of a dilemma in that. Um, uh, you know, if I if we made the if if I put if we put new brick on the new part uh, that's being built out two feet, I'm not sure how I'm going to get it to look like mm. the old brick that's painted white because a lot of that white material this 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 thick this thick coating is peeling off and so. It, it wouldn't make sense to paint on top of that because it doesn't. It's not a good surface to start with. Is that so some of the? Is that some of the? Yeah, yeah I'm sorry. Stuff? So and, and that's the reason why he started with the idea of covering so the stucco. So, we, so that's why we went to the thought of stucco because then we could put wire lath on the existing brick, mm -hmm. which would give us a solid, you know, a, 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 a surface that we could then put stucco on, and everything would be put adhere rather than having the potential issue of this old surface peeling off over time and taking with it whatever we put on top of it. And then if it's stucco, you're <coughs> proposing a string course, a thicker string string cro cross string course across the front. Is that what I'm reading here in the on the right side? Well that it's on like both. That you got here too. Oh. So, so you're talking about the, the band above yes. the wall? Yes, yes. Which would stand proud of the yes. stand proud yeah. of yes. the wall. And would it continue around to the on the driveway side? No. No. Just on the front. What's the condition of the driveway sides? Both hmm. sides of the building? Well, is it brick? Is it painted the, brick? The, or? The, so the left side of the building is brick. You just think of it. So it's you can almost think of it as two buildings. It's it's it really a mishmash. I mean, yeah. <laughs> I think they kept the, the the building on the right, or the or the portion of the building on the right, which was the addition. We speculate was the the original canopy roof, and then they enclosed the sides with cinder blocks or with, with cement block, and so that's why you know the roof lines don't align, mm. and the parapet wall doesn't align currently either. Once dropped. So um, the left side of the building, or the, the west side of the building currently, is, that would be the original building and it's white painted brick. 
or the, has this coating on the this coating brick. On. Um, and the the uh, east side of the building is cement block. And the, it's I, I have the right? nominating report photos. Of the oh yeah, please. So would you stucco the sides? Uh, I suppose we could. I, 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 we, I How about this? Were you, you were not, were you yeah. planning on stuccoing the sides? Not necessarily. Not necessarily. But, mm -hmm. yeah. but you might That's consider it. Yeah. Yeah, I, I guess that would make sense if you were going to have, if everything else was going to be stucco, you wouldn't have the one side brick. Yeah. I like, I mean, they're, I, you I know, like they're the look of the brick, but I don't have a physical, I don't have a, Construction strategy for dealing with with getting it to a, a, a situation where it's stable and I can do something with it. Do you think that the coating has damaged the brick underneath? I don't know. That's a good question, though. And why is it there in the first place, right? I, you know. I'd say why is it there in the first place, and then I would also say removing it to the level at which you can actually put something new on it might damage might it. Might damage yeah. it. Yeah. I've I've I seen I've seen that yeah. happen. Yeah. Um. So you may have had a, a deteriorating condition that this is remediating, exactly. and then you start to pull it off, and not only are you exposing deteriorated brick, but you're you're well, hammering. Right, right, you know. right. And so, so my it's unfortunate. If we were going to speculate further down that path, it would probably have been an issue with the mortar, I would say. But then, th then they could have repointed it. I don't. I, I don't know. I, I don't. I don't really know the answer. Do you think you could do more work on the brick surface that might um, give you an answer, or or do you feel that what you've well, done I, so far is, is I, you've exhausted I, yeah, that route? Yeah, I pretty much uh, exhausted that route. Been playing with it for several years, just trying oh. to figure out what to do with it. Um, do you must show does that picture. Well, this is. Yeah. What's this? That's a photograph of one area where the brick has been. Oh. Hey. <laughs> it's you want to. It's obviously a latex base. It's flexible. Mm -hmm. In some places, it's much thicker than that. But you know, that's. I bet you it's a latex epoxy. Right. But you don't think you could replicate. This I can't on the new portion if it was going to be brick. I, I, what I can't do is get it. I can't get the existing surface. So th just think of it as as a as a drywall. You know, as any wall, right? So the whole key to painting is prepping the surface. So you get the loose, scaly stuff off, right? And then, and then now, and then once you have this loose, scaly material off, you can. You have a stable base, and you can put your finish on that on that yeah. surface. I, in this case, can't get all of it off. But if I, is it failing currently? Yeah. Oh, yeah. It so it, it, it yes yeah exactly. Right. I'm sorry. I left that part I out. It's failing. Cracking. I thought this was the area you tried to remove the paint. <laughs> but it generally, more. overall, it's yeah it's failing. So, um, commissioners, how do you feel about um, you with more the architects? I don't know. Uh, my only question is, um, I didn't see any note about these signs being non-compliant. Are these signs compliant, Graham? Are these signs compliant? Yes. Yeah. Okay. I figured yeah, if there no wasn't a note. Relief. Yeah. Okay. That's my only question. No, I mean technically, I think um, I haven't seen that photograph, but I'm I'm yeah, I'm, I'm sad to say that I think you're probably right. I mean, what you could do would be to just rip it all off and put a whole new brick facade right. on it, yeah. but that's just not, I that mean, that's not what we're talking yeah, about. That would, uh, that's not what we're talking about. the feasibility, I think. Yeah. So if all, uh, if you've exhausted all um, avenues to uh, remove the epoxy-like paint, um, you would then put a stucco over that and then stucco over the new. Yeah, so we would put the, the, 
proposed solution for dealing with this surface would be to we put wire lath on the over the whole surface and then that would give us the right the, the mm -hmm. substrate for putting the uh, stucco on it and we anyway, I think as I'm listening we just stucco the whole building it wouldn't make sense to keep the west side brick that would be kind of silly but, mm. um, well just from the the, the uh, renderings you have I would prefer to, s to see it brick too but you're saying you can't yeah that's impossible it's not really going to look like this. I right, it's and it's not going to look like It that. looks like, <laughs> and it looks much nicer in the drawing, but it's not going to look like this, right. I think. So then the other thing we have to discuss is the metal overhang that you're proposing, which is the sign board. Actually, I, the, that was my second comment on that I... Uh, right. I would like to withdraw that. I think it works well. And this was actually the, one of the first applications I reviewed. And um, I think the, the, the marquee actually is really what it is. Um, historically, you would find those on, on public buildings or, ho or hotels or actually even small um, retail um, businesses. And I, I think it works. Um, and, and, and I, I think that, that there's an opportunity to incorporate lighting uh, underneath it and then maybe remove the lighting from the we, we from the agree. facade where it didn't exist no. historically. Uh, um, so I, I, I think it does work. So would these letters be cut, is that steel? And would it be, would the letters be cut out of the, with lighting behind it? No, it, it's steel, but um, these were face-mounted letters. I'm um, sorry, what's that? These are face-mounted face letters oh, applied okay. to the facade of that, um, that awning. Well, and I have to say I concur with Mr. Conley, because I think in this, in this uh, area of Wachung Historic District, I think that metal um, overhang works really well. Yeah, I think if the lighting's removed from the facade and, and right. incorporated into the marquee there. And as the you said, there. in the past, other, other parts of Wachung Plaza probably doesn't work. Right. No. Since there's yeah. only these two properties separated by the train tracks, this right. is one place you can do it. Right. And so it was on the other side of the tracks. The other side <laughs> of the track. <laughs> is it the good side or the bad side? <laughs> but I think it works really well there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and the and the bumper, um, if if it, if you could retain the, the the one that's near the door, I would. You know. I I think they're cool, and and yeah. they yeah. and they also work. And I, I would not <laughs> I would not add one the where there wasn't one right, historically. So let's yeah, let's not do that. Um, Mike, other question is about what these metal bulkheads that you have underneath the windows. Yes. What? It, why are you doing that for design relief? Just design purposes. Yeah, it's a, it's a metal louvered bulkhead. And I think it works well to mm. distinguish between what was historically a, a garage, uh, a bay opening. Mm -hmm. um, you don't want to. Yeah, we, we don't want like a solid aluminum panel. Mm. We don't want a wood panel. Um, so. I just like that the material is different from the facade. Um, it's not brick. Right. right. Yeah. But what would that? Are you are you thinking in terms of? Um, I know we're not supposed to. That's okay. Do color, but or what are you <laughs> thinking of in terms of color? F if it's stucco, and and the and the um, well, it won't be bright white and blue like it is now. <laughs> <laughs> are you saying anything? I think the like Island <laughs> theme. <laughs> um, I, ha I haven't given a lot of thought to color, to be honest. But uh, uh, I, 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 it would need to be something relatively understated and mm. neutral. Mm -hmm. And the awnings that are on there now, there are awnings on the windows, right? Do yeah. they serve a purpose? Do they actually cut the light? So I mean, the it sunlight it's, it's inside? It's a very strong southern exposure. Right. Are you going to be... So I, I can't really... They were there when we bought the building, so I can't really uh, say what it would be like without them. Mm -hmm. But I do know that the sun is... Uh, Pretty, pretty pretty strong, strong. there. So um, we just thought that we would deal with that through window treatments window rather yeah. than yeah. Yeah, I think uh, that's a good idea because I can't see this building with awnings on it the way no. you've got it no. I, rendered here. Uh, it's not a, it's not presently a very attractive building. I think we can all agree on that. Right. <laughs> so I'd like to make it 
um, something that you know well you know we're obviously we're a building contractor in town and mm. I like if it's, I'd like for it to be uh, even though we do mo mostly residential work I'd like for it to mm. And make and a statement. Yeah, that, no, no, no. Um, I think I think you have. And this one that wasn't approved over here, when you brought out, you put, um, I don't know what that is. If that's a porch or whatever, that that obscures the planting that's there now. You don't have any planting in your new plan. Plantings. There are there are hedges there. Correct. Yes. Well, I, I think one of the recommendations would be that you come up with a planting plan. Planting. Yeah. Because okay. that, that'll soften the whole thing, I think. It would soften it. Right. Any other comments? Mm -hmm. Questions? Mr. Conley, did we cover all your comments? Yeah. I, uh, I, I'm just glad the uh, 2013... <laughs> uh, <laughs> I'm glad you're back uh, here. You, 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 you We're glad you're back. The, uh, <laughs> the, it was the new design, yeah. <laughs> it was approved. So just yes, to review was. the couple of recommendations, uh, the the stucco is a selected option. The applicant should stucco all sides of the building that are going to be visible. Um, remove the wall-mounted sconces. Uh, incorporate lighting under the canopy over the entry door, um, and retain the bumper to the right of the entry door. And a planting. And, plan. and a planting. If possible. And planting. Yeah, I, I I don't think we're going to be able to maintain that bumper, but we'll look okay. at the options. And the planting, what was the note on the planting? That there should be a planting scheme in front okay. of the building, because there is a bed there. That's right. Sorry. Okay. okay. All right. And just to advise the commission again, this is scheduled for, this is a amended minor site plan with no variance relief being sought, so this is also scheduled for approval at Development Review Committee on September 6th, along with the restaurant application we just heard. So. Okay. okay, great. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah, it's great. It's Thank you. Great. I had fun. Okay, moving along their agenda. Do we have anyone here for public comment? There's no public left. No public. <laughs> Again. All right, our next, uh, uh, we have is the uh, committee reports education and outreach is anyone I no i sent oh let me ask graham okay. sure bye thank you bye bye uh, we're on to committee reports oh yes now. yes education and outreach have you heard an, of a new date for the uh researching your house history at the library? I have library? not been contacted by the library about a new date yet. Okay, so I, th I have a feeling I think it's going to be in October. I don't think they're doing anything in September. Um, and we haven't deci decided what we are going to do as a commission for the, um, what are we on? Uh, our anniversary. 150. Yes. So maybe for next w month, <laughs> somebody <laughs> come up with an idea? All right. Um, minor applications. Didn't we have the, an idea for a walking tour or something? Mm -hmm. Like a... A walking tour? Right. Not like a walking tour, but um, weren't we supposed to have a catalog of... Oh, of places? buildings. Yeah, of buildings. Oh. Yeah. 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 What? Really? Really? Bring it over. Bring yes. It. We'll Bring plagiarize it. it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that would be great. I may, I may be mixing up. <laughs> okay. Oh, we're going to hold you to that. Uh -huh. <laughs> okay, great. And, w and was it, yes, now it's coming back to me, an inventory of buildings that mm -hmm. we... Yeah. No, it's <laughs> like I have an inventory of all the buildings that were built as of 1868 in this town. And as long as existing mm -hmm. buildings that... Mm -hmm. were, that still remain. That were, that existed when the town... When the town was founded. founded yeah. That's a nice project. Can you, yeah, this, can you yeah, can we send that? Is somebody us? working? Is somebody doing something with that? No, I, is that the list I you got from the assessor? The reason I have is I got it from the assessor at the beginning of the list. year. Oh. The idea that maybe they put up some nice little signs. Mm -hmm. This house was here when Montclair was founded, or this building was here, but needless to say, nobody did it. Oh, mm -hmm. okay. This That's may kind be of our a moment. good idea, though. That's a great yeah. idea. Yeah. I just thought it would be kind of nice. Yeah. I mean, there All aren't right. that many. I mean, I mean no. 
can't remember, but it was wow. the range of 100. Okay. Maybe Good so should we just go put up our own signs without the <laughs> property owner's <laughs> uh, consent? <laughs> or something? Yeah. 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 We could also incorporate them on the yard, yard sign kind of highlight them. Well, on the interactive zoning mm -hmm. map? On the interactive historic I'll map. I'll send you the list. Mm -hmm. Highlight them. All right. Okay. That would be great. Yeah. Thanks, Ira. So minor applications moving uh, along. We're next scheduled to meet on Tuesday. Tuesday of next week. Do you uh, have those printed out? Uh, like a table? I don't. Yeah. I just got two more today, so they're okay. starting to. <laughs> yeah, just, uh, <laughs> it's been a little tough scheduling. We've had some vacations the past couple of weeks, so mm -hmm. um, so we have a bunch to do on Tuesday. Yeah. Week, so. Okay. Just send it to me Monday. Yeah. I'll look at it the night before. But uh, just in terms of things going on, I know we wrapped up the. Brazil Paradise. Yes. Right. So uh, I think that covers everything that was. Yeah, that was still pending. Still pending. Mm -hmm. Okay. Good. And what is coming up on Tuesday? Just more, I'm guessing, sign applications, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, nomination. We Graham and I met with Wayne McCabe, who's. And Steve we'll was there. And mm -hmm. Who's virtually My there? Phone. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Sorry, <laughs> Mr. Rooney was there. Virtually, but um, and we spoke about um, his work on the western expansion of the of Bloomfield Avenue, mm -hmm. and we actually um, Graham was very good in um, getting him getting dates for that for all the different um, outlining the process. Yeah, the the, and outlining the process. So we hope to his contract is through the end of the year, just right. for the benefit of everybody. And so, in his contract, his appearance at four public meetings we scheduled. So that's us. Uh, the council and the planning board. Was there a fourth one? I don't know. Planning I think we wrote for it. In the I think he. D there was a pre one. It's going to see us twice. Oh, right. Okay. right. So in any event, he has to get all four of those public meetings in by December. So we kind of mapped out. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, when, when we can sketch those. Dates yeah, in, so. monthly when he's going to do it. And um, I s he I sent him some information. And were you supposed to send him information? Yes, and I I. I have cobbled together some stuff and sent up a couple things. I need to close the loop and find okay. the person I can move everything. So. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, that, that's great. Now, I know this isn't nomination, but what about Ms. Krugman's um, grant? I have not heard from Ms. Krugman. Yeah. Maybe. She was away. I know she was on a big trip, but she should be back by now. Could you send her a note? Sure. Please, because, I mean, the same thing is going to happen. That um, that We're needs to be time. wrapped up by <laughs> December and we'll run out of mm -hmm. time. Um, all right, and then the um, the next planning board, Mr. Rooney, what have you had to report back to us? Oh man, I had Monday will be the third one in August. Third one this month. <laughs> <laughs> you guys keep busy. Well, we're very job. busy. Mm -hmm. But this coming Monday is an important one because this is also dedicated to Lackawanna. Right. We just got new plans yeah, this week, mm -hmm. and I have not looked at them. Mm -hmm. But they are on the website, correct? Mm -hmm. yeah. They are on the website. I, I never can find it, but you know, mm. I've heard that's there. <laughs> it and is linked from the agenda. So it's linked from the agenda. You click in the agenda, <laughs> it will take you to the folder. Talk well, to be <laughs> logically, Graham. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah why, uh, why isn't there uh, uh, an explanation of how to actually find this on the, I mean, we know how to do it because we're here, but people ask all the time. Well, I guess we can add a phrase at the beginning of the agenda. Yeah, click it. <laughs> Please click. <laughs> <laughs> we went to an ADA compliance training and they said never write "please click" because when an <laughs> when a blind person hears text, it oh says "link no. click here, click." Oh. Oh. They hear it three times. Oh, so oh it's boy, it's kind of an interesting. Thing. All right, <laughs> interesting. So we can certainly add something, some language, well, just something that mm -hmm. that makes it more okay. easier for people to mm -hmm. actually find this because okay. everyone's always asked, they can't find it. Um, don't make a text, make it an image. Yeah. <laughs> 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 we the whole, yeah, here we are. So, um, and I, th well, I don't know what's on the agenda, but the last meeting was very interesting because we had the um, applicants, historic um, mm -hmm. preservation specialists uh, came and spoke and basically said that our, probably our most iconic structure was worthless in, in his eyes. So that that was really very interesting. That's the only thing on the agenda, by the way. Mm -hmm. yeah. Right, right. I think that his point was 
that as as it was modified, it mm -hmm. made it um, not worth anything. Mm. But as I was trying to point out to him that this these buildings wouldn't be there without a train, mm. and that's what this. Mm -hmm. delineates in the original structure we can keep. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We could get rid of the... Because yeah, the bones are still there. Right? Oh, yeah. yeah, the structure Get rid of there. the infill, get rid mm -hmm. of the uh, alteration is what you're saying. Right. right. Yeah. Right. Um, did he actually address the factors from the um, Historic Preservation Ordinance? I mean, he paid lip service to it in the report but then he applied his own factors in terms of what the yeah. historical significance was. But did he actually apply the factors from the uh, ordinance? Yes, because there were how many factors? And he said that the first three, the first two mm -hmm. were maintained, but the, the last ones weren't. I don't have it with me, but no. it, was, it was an interesting... It was uh, an interesting thing, and it, yeah. it seemed to be... Not well received, I think. But Political. Right. Mm -hmm. So anyway, the next meeting is August 27th, so we'll go and keep Steve company. <laughs> I it's going to be, a lot of it's going to be parking. Right. And, but it, like I said, there are new drawings out. It's not very much, but they are there. And, okay, anything else on Lackawanna then? I think that's it. The Design Review Committee? DRC? DRC? Me? The development review committee. Oh, that's right. There's really nothing's happened. There was, um, since the, our last meeting, we've there, been trying, we've been to, trying get to get together. To get together. Which is like herding cats in August. Mm. Yeah. Because so. wh what we want to do is meet out in the field. Yes. And to have them show. What, what do they're doing on the hotel. Yes. And how that can work on the parking garage. Because they are putting an EFIS type material on the hotel, which was approved. Ooh. But nobody can. I mean, I, 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 someone should just set a time and whoever can go should go. It's sort of one of those right now. Yeah. Okay. But it's August and everybody's not cooperating. <laughs> but there's, to my knowledge, there's been no movement. There's there been hasn't like been any movement. Yeah. There's something for next week, but I haven't heard anything about it. So. Okay. Yeah. Um, is that it with our committees, I think? Yes. Um, I guess revisions, just to mention that you guys met um, oh, at the right. carriage house site to kind of just explore and, uh, and review the application that was scheduled for this evening. So. The revisions committee got kind of a, a head, head start look. So Mr. Connolly was president of the meeting as well, so which kind of give everybody the benefit of what's happened at the site, what's going on, and what they're going to present. Uh, and that's been rescheduled for September, September meeting. meeting. Correct. Okay. Mm -hmm. So if there is there any other um, business to conduct or discuss? No. All right. It's uh, nine fifty. We have the wait. We have a resolution. resolution. Oh. Have to to prove the rest of it. Yeah, we're doing good, though. <laughs> Better. Do you have it? Yes. I've lost mine. This is it. I can share it. Yeah. Can I share I that? Actually don't have it. Okay, we have the resolution for WEMCL Holdings okay. LLC for 222-230 Bloomfield Avenue. Um, this is a resolution uh, that uh, deals with the scope of work pr proposed by the applicant and, and, and our discussion. Applicant proposes a series of improvements to subject storefronts, including the following. Um, installation of a new cap, flashing and center cap to reflect the formal central cap on the building. Restoration of the owl heads, not eagles, on the facade. Replacement of the storefronts on the building with new silver storefront system and glazing, new sign bands in a transom area above the storefronts, and stone base and infill on the two center columns on the facade. And we recommended, as any as the condition of any approval, the proposed sideband should be constructed of tinted glass panels 
and aluminum freighting appearing as an extension of the storefront area below. The proposed lettering for the sign bin should be consistent in scale and size across the storefronts. The background material, either terracotta or tinted sto cast stone, of the proposed light fixtures and central columns should be presented to the Revisions Committee for final selection, and the light fixtures are to be reviewed by the Revisions Committee for final selection. Our committee decision was seven um, yeas, zero no's, and no abstentions. So, um, so I move to adopt. Mm -hmm. I, se I second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, Graham. Mm -hmm. So I'll sign it. Sorry. Oh, yeah, when did you do that? Um, okay, so now it's still 9.50. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's 9.51. All right, 9.51. May I have a motion to uh, adjourn? Motion to adjourn. I can second it. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Did you walk